Welcome to Ball and Play, presented by Baseball News Club. We cover everything with a ball and stick around the world. We cover Major League Baseball, to International, Dominican, Australian, to Korean. We also cover NCAA Baseball Division I and softball, all the way on down, Little League softball, to T-ball. We cover over the line, wiffle ball, anything with a ball and stick. We will cover it here at Ball and Play. Please stop right now. I need you to subscribe. Please comment and also turn on your notifications. Thank you very much. And let's get started with this journey we call baseball. Welcome, welcome to Ball and Play, presented by Baseball News Club. I am your host, Sesma. Welcome to episode number 13. We got an action-packed episode today. Today is the episode, before I start giving you the topics of the episode, today I'm giving you my yearly Major League predictions before April 7th. Today is April 4th, so I'm giving it to you guys three days early. These are my division predictions for the rest of the year. Um, but also, we got a ton of stuff. Really, I don't know what happened this week, but it just barreled up. We've got... Oh, man, HR Derby X to talk about. Uh, Mike Schilt speaks up. Former, that's a hell of a drama story right there. Former Cardinals coach Jordan Hicks is in the news. Flatty Greer's 10-year-old son is in the news. Pools, man, bad news with him and some other news. It's just, God, this guy's life right now. Bobby Witt Jr. news. Carlos Beltran, Spencer Torkison, Jacob DeGrom, Billy Hamilton. Oh, a famous, incredible picture circulating on instagram about the phillies um aaron judge man i'm seriously i got like matt Beatty. oh god sticky balls again we all got sticky balls and uh god dang man seriously i have a ton trevor bauer is always back in the news but let's get going man because seriously i've got a ton to go over um first off before we start this show will be primarily about the division predictions, but I'm going to try to run through everything for you guys. Uh, opening day starters. Uh, we kind of went over that last week. We're going to go over that in just a second. But I want to remind everybody before we go into opening day starters, there's still a ton of baseball out there. And what I mean is don't stop supporting everything. You know where some of you guys know where I'm going to go with this. I'm going to start going on my rant. Uh, support Little League, support softball, support college ball, support blitz ball, wiffle ball, support everything, guys. However, um, remember right now we got uh, Nippon baseball, Japanese baseball, we got the Korean baseball going on. Look into that, guys. Support them any way you can. You can watch the KBO at VIP. I tell you guys that every week. VIP.com. Been using that for like 13, 14 years. Um, man, Major League Baseball. Announces International HR Derby. This is some people. I saw a lot of really crazy comments on this. Some people. This this is something we kind of knew about, but this home run baseball X is going to happen throughout the season in different cities around the world. Uh, I saw a lot of mixture on social media. Some people were really bagging on this, saying that MLB is becoming like NASCAR. The players are going to start having to wear Pepsi on their jersey and crap like that. To some, thought it's just a phenomenal idea. I'm kind of on the fence with it because I can't visually wrap my head around it. But what based what the new Home Run Derby X is called, which is not the same as Major League Baseball All-Star Game Home Run Derby. So first off, get that out of your head. It's not even close. So it's very interesting. This is scheduled. First, it's going to be Crystal Palace in London on July 9th, followed by other de 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 determined locations, Seoul. South Korea, September 17th. I think Mexico City on October 15th. So it's really weird. It's a really weird format. I get what they're trying to do. Yes, baseball's been growing forever, and it is a part of an effort to grow baseball and continue to grow, and these are the themes that are going to come about. I mean, we're going to have weird stuff like this happen, guys, and I I think it's a great idea. And if you remember last week, we talked about the, the kids. Uh, they're going to have the Junior Home Run Derby at the... And I think that's a great idea. And when you look at social media, that's all you see is a lot of people just doing bad in practice home run derbies and looking around and celebrating because everyone loves to hit tanks. Who doesn't want to hit tanks? But to digress, four major league teams, Dodgers, Cubs, Yankees, and Red Sox will be represented. So it works 
with each team consisting of four players, you got an MLB legend, which is going to be sweet, a superstar, a women's baseball or softball player, that's going to be sweet, a wild card, and this is really weird. They say a high profile content creator, and then in quotes, trained up by MLB. So I don't get that. They're going to get somebody from John Boy, or are they going to, you know, a content create high profile content creator? Are they going to take someone that doesn't even know baseball? It's just really weird that part. And then a rookie, up and coming talent. Um, will be drawn from the men's baseball development system. So that's, it sounds really cool. It's obviously to bring, I think what it's doing is instead of trying to bring baseball around the world, they're going to try to create HR Derby, which if you think about it, that's what we all played in our backyard. It's easier to do HR Derby than it is to do start with baseball. So it, it makes sense. And this is something they should have done a long time ago in, in retrospect, but if you think about it, it's harder to start a baseball league than it is to start an HR Derby league. Uh, HR Derby, you just technically need two people. You can go play in your backyard with your best friend. I mean, really. Um, you don't need a lot. So this can pretty much be applicable to every single city, county, country, dirt field around the world. So this is a great way to expand baseball. So in that respect, yes, I'm for it. I think it's the coolest thing. But what's interesting, it does differ a lot. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of over the line what they're doing. But it's it's not like the home run derby we're used to at the also game. For one, there there's fielders. There's two from each team. While on defense, catchers count as one point. And so you've got their catchers and your fielders. The, the field is really drastically different. It's limited by a 45 degree angle from home plate. There is a fence between 283, 20 feet to center field and 26300 down the lines. Um and the weirdest thing is both the pitcher's mound and the batter's box is a raised is raised on a stage. So I think what they're doing in their concept or in their mind saying, hey, we can create stages around the world and we can play home run derby where we don't need a field, we don't need grass, we don't need to worry about the environment in the ground. And I guess that's cool. So all four batter, batters for each team get 25 swings, and which comes from a maximum of 35 pitches. And there's more details that are going to come out. But that's what they got going on right now. Uh, I don't know. I haven't wrapped my head around it. It's kind of like, I think I'd be better if I could see it. You know what I'm saying? If I can see it, then it'll make sense. But right now, I can't see it. <clears throat> it's not making sense for me. But, hey, we're going to grow the sport. This is actually, I think, a really good idea. I really do. It's going to be easier to grow to sport with the home run derby, like I said, yada, yada. Now let's go into other news. Um, this week, Fox 2 did an interview with Mike Schilt, <clears throat> the former, uh, not just coach, but former longtime 18 years with the St. Louis organization. He spoke out. Now, we all know about this. Last year, St. Louis, him at the helm as a head coach, they had one of the most historic runs to the playoffs. To the playoffs. And he was let go. And the rumor was is some type of differences between him and the, the organization, the owner. And that's pretty much what I've dug up. Uh, and if you've been listening to our podcast for a while, that's what I, I've talked about it a few times. It's very hard to find any information on what really happened. Well, according to Mike, um, he says basically is, you know, physiological differences. He was dismissed beyond citing just that. And he says, I have a broken heart. It still hurts. It hurts bad. When it first happened, it broke down. It was it was hard for him. So currently right now, he's temporarily filling in at third base for San Diego Padres while Matt Williams is away from the team. He's an, also an advisor and works for MLB. But this is, and we talked a little bit about the organization in St. Louis. We all know it's a phenomenal organization. But what really happened there, man? What really happened? Dude, he's a good I don't, you know, when someone has a resume like that, it just makes you wonder what the ownership's really doing and why they did it. Well, let's stick with St. Louis. <clears throat> In positive news for St. Louis, Jordan Hicks. He's back, Jack. Throwing 102. Um, does that make a difference for that division? Well, you're going to find out later, but mm-hmm, I think so. I very much think that's a good impacting player for that division. For St. Louis in that division. But Jordan hits Hicks back. He's hitting 102 on the radar. Looking good. Looking good. So um, let's move on to some other news. And we're 
don't know if you guys have seen this, but uh, Vladimir Guerrero's son, 10-year-old son, he's the youngest son of Vladimir Guerrero. If you guys uh, go to Hector Gomez at Twitter, he posts him hitting a home run, and he looks just like his pop. So another Guerrero is in the pipeline. He's a ways away. He's 10. But you got to be kidding me, man. This talent of this family. You know, in, in that family, it's like, oh, you don't go to school. I mean, you got to go to school, but you're going to go play baseball. Um, in other news, let's just go right into, like I said, I'm going to zip through this stuff, guys. Uh, in San Diego news, Jim Dietz, SDSU coach for a very long time, um, he passed away. Jim Dietz was a huge part of the San Diego baseball program for an extremely long time. Uh, everyone that's alumni there knows about Jim Dietz. If you guys know the backstory, I've told you about this before. When Tony Gwynn was retired from baseball, he got hired on as SDSU coach. Um, Jim Dietz was finishing his last year as a coach, and Tony was played with Jim Dietz under him. A lot of great players went through Jim. Actually, Tony Gwynn Jr. also played for him. But uh, you can't find anyone that says anything bad about that guy. He was an amazing – sometimes you get these coaches that stay with programs for a long time and did do really good and help these programs out and become great programs. So condolences to his family and SDSU alum. Now, since we're on uh, – let's go back to St. Louis. During spring training, St. Louis Cardinals recently scored 29 runs off of Washington. And Albert Pujols was in the game. This tells you something about – and, you know, a lot of fans that love Albert for his first – first part one career in St. Louis and his part two career. You don't hear many angel fans talking positive about Albert, but I give Albert a hard time because I'm just giving you guys the truth. Some of you guys out there have been really harsh on media with anyone that doesn't like Albert Pujols. And that's not baseball guys. You know, anyone should have the right to say what they want with social media without a bunch of little toads or trolls slamming those people and i've seen it a lot i didn't comment on albert because i knew it was too hot of a button but i read a lot of the comments out there and there's some real dicks out there and i'm just this message goes out to you if you're going to be one of those cowards that hides behind your social media and rips on people just because they disagree with you you know what you are a toad and you always will be a toad and it's unfortunate because you ruin it for everyone else but that's okay we all rise above people like you and what I'm getting to is anyone that said anything negative about Albert was immediately shot down on social media. So it's really sad. Everyone's drinking the Albert Pujols juice, but you know what? I got some news for you that you're not going to like. A uh, couple things about Albert Pujols in that 29 run game that St. Louis had. Uh, Albert Pujols was responsible for zero runs, zero RBIs. So, you know, there's a sign for you right there, guys. Um, he ground into a double play. And this week, Albert Pujols announced his retirement, he basically said, this is it for me. This is my last run. Now, this is his retirement party. We talked about it. I talked about it last year a lot that he should be doing this, in my opinion. Should have announced it just and treats it just like Jeter. He should have done that last year. And if you remember last year, his wife announced his, announced his retirement for him. And then he came out a few weeks later. And it's just been a really ugly theme for him. And now what has become even uglier, and I really saw social media kind of turning on Albert, is he announced Monday that him and his wife Deidre are splitting up after she underwent successful surgery to remove a brain tumor. So, yeah, this guy's life right now. So he announces, if you remember last year, the drama, she announced his retirement, then he came back and said, no, I'm not retiring. It was just kind of an ugly thing. So he announces the divorce right after her surgery's been done and he says i've and he quote or i quote pervadum i've been asked a lot of questions over the past few days regarding what's going on at home and sadly after 22 years of marriage i made a decision to divorce from my wife deidre um i know it's not the opportune time with opening day yada yada you know her her brain tumor but um i i don't know man it's just it just doesn't sit well you know, I, that's something you probably could put off. And for him to say it's unfortunate I had to say this around uh, opening day and announce it with his retirement. I mean, okay. Again, let's be real. If you don't know Albert Pujols, do you think this is a very egotistical move on his part? Very bad timing. 
He had the opportunity all last year to, or even way before the season, to announce his retirement. Now, granted, he wasn't picked up by St. Louis, so now he's getting the ball rolling, but maybe you could have left out the divorce thing for another month or two, maybe. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, Pujols is looking worse and worse the last 12 months. But, hey, it's Albert Pujols. We all love him. In other news, um, and I've, we've talked about this a lot, Los Angeles Dodgers, Trevor Bauer is suing the, the Athletic. The Athletic is the original source of the Astros baseball cheating scan, uh, scandal. We all know that. But he's suing the Athletic and former reporter Molly Knight, accusing them of creating and spreading the false narrative that he had fractured a woman's skull during that sexual encounter. This is a 26-page complaint filed in U.S. District Court in Los Angeles against the athletic media company and Knight. Basically, a legend defamation of character. I've talked about this a lot on <clears throat> on social media, and this is something that I think a lot of the young people don't realize is your mouth, and it's funny because I was just talking about this, how people talk shit on social media. Dude, you can get sued. You can go to jail. You can get in trouble for this stuff, for real. And look at... Tr I told... I talked about this in my podcast. I hate to be repeating myself, but you guys that follow me know what I'm saying. I talked about this last year with Trevor Bauer saying, ooh, there was a lot of people that jumped on. He's done in Major League Baseball forever train. A lot of people jumped on it. The Athletic was one of them. There's a lot of social people saying, social media people saying he's done, blah, blah, blah. You can't do that. I understand you want to write sensationalism. I understand you're trying to get clickbait. You can't say shit like that. Why? That's why he's getting sued. See, when you're younger, you don't own shit. You just live at home with mom and daddy. And mom and dad, that's why they stress out on you because you're a liability. Anytime you do anything illegal, they pay for it. So when you become an adult, that's when you start being a little, stop being a little dickhead because you start owning stuff and you're realizing, oh man, I can't believe I treated my parents like that. Now I have to own a home. Now I have to have auto insurance. I have to have all this liability. People can sue me. So the, the tables will turn on those people out there that don't get that. You can't say shit about people. Like when I say stuff, you know, talking about Albert Pools, I'm just reporting the news. I'm not out there saying Trevor Barrett is never going to play again. So that is basically it. And I had it. I wouldn't doubt it if Trevor Bauer ends up aiming this wave towards MLB and the commissioner. I mean, they are technically what they're doing right now. I mean, think about it. It's illegal. You are suspending a person that you've yet to make a decision on, but you don't know when you're going to make that decision. So until you make that decision, you're just going to keep extending his administrative leave. What the hell? It's another form of manipulation. This is why we went through the CBA. This is why we have the lockout. This is why we have problems with ownership and Rob Manfred. This is manipulation. Just like players' time, service time manipulation, you're manipulating Trevor Bauer. Again, if you listen to my podcast, you know what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter if you're for Trevor or not. We're talking, take Trevor's name out of it. Put John Smith. Put the most generic name in there. If you look at the everything that's going on you're going to be most likely the most intelligent people out there are going to be like you know what i'm still on the fence with this because she said this trevor said this uh two things have happened in trevor's favor regarding n the courts not approving the um the first order the restraining order against them they knocked that down and then most recently la county you know the prosecutor said no we're not going to pursue him so he's won twice and he's trying to get back on the field again love him or hate him this is a sexual encounter. This is the most odd thing that Major League Baseball has to deal with. Almost every other domestic violence situation Major League Baseball I can think of, it just involves violence at a home or, you know, sometimes at a club. This involves sex, then violence. It's a slippery slope. You know what I'm talking about? A lot of you guys in school for law, this is a very interesting case. Trevor Bauer is probably talked a lot about in schools right now because if you follow his path and what he's doing, he's a smart dude. There's a reason why he's suing people now. He's not dumb. He's not going to let you screw with his career. He's got talent. And again, if you hate him or not, it makes it very interesting. Um, in other news, the Nationals are retiring number 11, Ryan Zimmerman. Now, if you remember, the Nationals were the Expos way back in the day. Expos had retired Gary Carter, 8, 
Rusty Staub, and The Hawk, uh, which were number 10, and then number 30, Tim Raines, and of course number 42, but now the Nats uh, are retiring Ryan Zimmerman, and I talked to you guys about that recently, that Ryan Zimmerman is retiring, he's he's a fan favorite, I think, for most everybody, uh, even if you're not a national fan, I think you, you can't go wrong with a guy like Ryan Zimmerman. Um, in other news, we're going to continue on the investigation with the New York sign stealing scandal. That is growing day by day. A couple things that have happened. First off is Brian Cashman came out, foot in mouth syndrome, pointing that, and I quote, horrific ordeal is why New York has not been in the World Series since 09. He is offended. Wait a minute. Again, dude, foot and mouth. How about both feet and your fists in your mouth? Bro, you got a letter coming out in a couple soon in a week or two that letter is going to be revealed and you're going to point out saying that was a horrific ordeal and that's why the Yankees have not been to the World Series you're going to blame the science stealing scandal when in fact you're involved in it the hypocrisy is unbelievable a Yankees fan they're very proud fans Yankee fans aren't going to be happy with this he they're not going to be happy with this Yankee fans are good sports fans and this is something that it's just going to piss them off you know, with Brian Cashman not delivering World Series, making excuses, blaming this, then getting caught in a stealing scandal. Um, the only positive thing that's happened in New York right now is John Boy Media joining the Yes Network. I mean, seriously, that's about it. There's a lot of drama going on in New York. And to take it a step further, Carlos Beltran is all involved in that. And he's been opening his jaw lately with new comments. And he, he, he's coming out saying, yeah, we crossed the line. What? Carlos Beltran coming out saying, yep, we crossed the line. Um, here's the theme first before we dig into that. Okay, this is so many levels, but I want to get through this quickly as possible because, again, I want us to get on to the, the other stuff. But he's basically saying they all knew about it. Ownership didn't do anything about it, but it was it was a horrible thing that happened, and it, it is what it is. So he's addressing it. But I don't know. To me, it's the God, man. I didn't want to start the baseball season with this crap. First, we got Beltran rearing his head. Now, New York Yankees are going to be in trouble with that letter. Cashman's acting like an ass. And to make it even worse, uh, Aaron Judge is being thrown around in the mix now. So, New York's not extending the Judge contract. And then Beltran comes out. I mean, the guy is all over this right now. Beltran comes out and says, oops, no one's ever been to confirm it, but he said, oh, I'm glad the Yankees extended his contract. I don't know if the dude's drunk and he just is saying that or he knows something no one else knows about, but so far it's creating a bunch of waves on, on the media because everyone's trying to confirm it. There's no confirmation. But then there's talk of, oh, geez, it's just, it's a mess. But I don't want to focus on that. I want to focus on baseball. And one of the coolest things that happened this week, and you can see it on... Oh, yeah, we're going to move on to other news. Oh, hell yeah, I'm done with that shit. Um, Billy Hamilton in other news. Go to our YouTube channel, Baseball News Club. He made the catch. The dude, all, he made a fantastic catch last season, too. If you guys remember, diving in the rain. I mean, that was a hell of a catch in left center by him. Well, he made a catch that just climbing the wall. Uh God, I'd have to go way back and think of guys that used to play in Atlanta in center field like Andrew Jones who used to do that shit. But I challenge you guys, when you get done with this podcast or while you're listening, go look at Billy Hamilton's stolen bases in the minor leagues if you've never done that. you Just have some like drop down rags on the ground because when your brain blows up and your head explodes off your mind, you're just going to head explodes off your shoulders. You're just going to be like, oh, I got to pick up the bits of my brain all over. I cannot believe I just saw that. Yeah. Most insane stats. And I'm not going to be a spoiler for you. I challenge you. Go read it, man. Go look up his stats. Now, another great news. There's a phenomenal fo- photograph. I mean, if I was a young kid and I almost was tempted to do it now, and I'm a Padre fan too. I love this pick on Philly social media this week. They had Schwarber Hoskins, JT, Castellanos and Harper, and you only saw their backs, and they're all five walking away, you know, kind of just walking together at spring training, either going to the field or wherever it was. But the photo's awesome because it shows Nick and, and Bryce right next to each other, and Bryce and Nick are, you know, smiling. 
it's that's something you want as a poster as a kid on your wall that is just i'm gonna bring that up every week i freaking love that photo i'm pulling for the phillies this year i think they're gonna be a fun club and we'll talk more about in the predictions but man um aj pollock trade for to chicago for craig Krimbrell. well i was watching Craig Krimble uh spring training and he got slacked he got worked he got worked over big time in spring training but hey, it's spring training you know what i'm saying we just need these people down towards the end of the season speaking of people we need at the end of the season bad news in new york mets new york just got shitty news all the way around recently you know, drama queens in the east coast new york mets announce in other news jacob Degrom tightness per buck showalter uh, it ends up being a stress reaction to his right scapula that caused inflammation. He has to stop throwing for four weeks. Now, he had issues last year. This is the key to their season. This was the key to their season last year. And I think we all agree, Jacob DeGrom's performance before he got injured last year is hardly probably one of the, I think it's 15 starts, probably some of the best 15 start stretch at the beginning of the season in baseball history. He wasn't there for the end. And the key is for the Mets. They need him, man. So maybe this is a good thing he's injured now. I mean, if all you can get is 15 out of him, you want him, I'm not saying manipulate it, but God, you just hope it's 15 towards the end of the season. You know what I'm saying? You need him. You need him in the playoffs. Max is going to keep you there. But, man, you need a healthy Jacob DeGrom. And that's the big question mark for that division. It's going to be a hell, of, a pretty good race in that division. But I'm telling you, man. Anyhow, let's move on to good news. Bobby Witt Jr. makes opening day roster for Kansas City. Woo, woo, woo. That's going to be badass. And we're going to see this because you guys remember CBA. Part of the CBA is to have younger players on opening day rosters. You're seeing it already happen. Bobby Witt makes it. Spencer Torkelson, starting first baseman. And it was great. It was a meeting with A.J. Finch, Miggy, and the GM, Al Avila. They all met with him and sat him down, and basically is a passing of the torch, man. What an incredible, I mean, nah, there's, you have nothing to worry about, Spencer. You ain't got no shoes to fill. Dude, are you kidding me? So, again, another player that we're talking about, young players that we're going to be seeing this happen on a lot of teams. And uh, Seattle had that, the young player he hit three home runs. He's going to be on the payroll, so it's going to be great. Um, writing on the raw. Let's talk about San Diego real quick. They got Matt Betty from L.A. Outfield, first base, and third. He can play. But the Padres went and got Luke Voigt. So they've got a ton of first basemen. But I think what you're going to see this year, you're going to see um, Eric Hosmer traded. Uh, he's really drawn a lot of ear towards Padre fans in the last year. He hasn't really fulfilled his contract. But again, hey, man. You go to, from a hitting stadium to a pitcher stadium, you know what I'm saying? The fact that Tatis is putting up the numbers he is in that stadium is fucking nuts, man. Seriously, put that guy in Colorado. He's like 60, 70 homers. I mean, really, people. Um, But, yeah, that's where we're at with that. I almost forgot what I was talking about. But um, the Padres are interesting in a lot of ways, but... That, to me, is writing on the wall. You don't st- stack up your first base like that. So you got Beatty. Uh, you got Luke, who's hitting tanks in spring training. But with Eric falling out with the fans and the organization, because they've seen it written in the San Diego Tribune, uh, their local paper, that's going to be trade bait. I wouldn't doubt that for the Padres. And for them to get an arm, which is just positions themselves really good. Um, let's go back to the Nike connect uniforms. Let's go back to the HR Derby around the world. Um, those are pretty cool looking jerseys, man. I don't know if you guys have seen the jerseys. I was a little worried at first. Like, what do they look like? They're pretty tight, man. Those are nice jerseys. So anyways, let's move on to other news. Don't forget about Field of Dreams, October or August 11th, Cubs and Reds. Mark that down. Um, but yeah. No, I think the Padres, by getting Mac, Matt Betty again, to digress to that, I really think that sends a signal. It's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it works out for the Padres. And, again, we talked about the junior HR. That's going to happen at the All-Star game. That's going to be super fun. Uh, if the All-Star game is tight after nine, then it's HR Derby. I'm okay with that, man. I'm okay with that. 
Um, let's see other news. Man, I wanted to go over so many things with you guys. Oh, you know what? Let's go over starting day pitchers. And I think we're just going to run right into the predictions. Why not? So let's go over. It makes sense. Let's talk about starting day pitchers. Now, I've talked about this with you guys numerous times. I've been giving you guys warnings for a long time. You need to figure out a way to call on sick. You need to figure out a way to get around away from your partner, get around all your baseball buddies, and watch baseball all day on Thursday, April 7th. I'll be having at least six games going on with me. I don't know about you. I always get it going on my tablet, my cell phone, because I have the Major League package. Here's a plug for those guys. And then I have my my uh, computer, which I could split it into four games, so... Oh, yeah, I'm watching the games. First game of the day will be Boston and New York. Nathan Ovalde is going to be the getting the opening day start for the Red Sox and Garrett Cole, of course. Milwaukee at Chicago, Corbin Burns and versus Kyle Hendricks. Kyle gets the nod for opening day starter. The Mets at Washington. Right now it's undecided for the Mets, and Washington's going to have Patrick Corbin as a starting pitcher. Seattle at Minnesota opening day pitcher Robbie Ray, of course. Joe Ryan from Minnesota. Cleveland going to have the Beebs. He's going to be on the mound against Zach Greinke. Full circle, Kansas City, Zach Greinke. See what I did there? Pittsburgh, JT Brubaker at St. Louis. Adam Wainwright, opening day starter. Guys turning 40 soon. Good God. Cincinnati, Atlanta. Tyler Mahill against Max Freed. Houston at Los Angeles Angels, this is awesome. Framber Valdez again. Show hey Otane. And then San Diego at Arizona. You Darvish against Madison Bumgarner. You know what? That's an interesting game because Padres need to hit. We've talked about that. So that's your opening day lineup, guys. That's fantastic. And then, you know, Friday, you've got Chicago and Detroit. Uh, Lucas is going to be pitching. Eduardo Rodriguez is going to be on the mound. Uh, Walker Bueller for the Dodgers is going to be pitching that day. And then Logan Webb is going to be pitching. Sandy uh, Alicantra is going to be pitching. John Gray. I mean, there's dude Charlie Morton's pitching. So uh, on Friday, April the 8th, you're going to see all these other starters. Good times, guys. Good times. So, again, figure it out, man. Get your shit together, guys. Figure it out. Let's move on to predictions. Now, with predictions, I'm going to go every over each division. We're going to talk a lot about each one, and let's get into it. But before we get into it, I want to talk about my last year's predictions. The American League East, um, I picked the Yankees, the Blue Jays, Rays, Red Sox, and Orioles. And honestly, just like last year and this year, dude, one of the best, if not the best divisions of baseball, that's a competitive division, man. So uh, I had Boston fourth. I didn't think Boston had the pitching, but hey, they proved me wrong. Uh, Rays were right there. Blue Jays, Yankees, and then in the Central, I had the White Sox. I think that was pretty easy for anyone to pick. I had Twins, second. Cleveland Spiders, third. Fourth, KC, then Detroit Tigers. You know, a spoiler alert, it's probably going to be the same this year. And then in the West, I had the Athletics, Seattle, which ended up being second. Houston, if you just flip-flop Houston with Oakland, that's what you're looking at, kind of. Uh, and then Angels in Texas. And then in the National League West, I have the Dodgers, Padres, San Francisco, which is pretty much it. They were the first half. Those three teams were battling for first. Padres fell out the end. San Francisco ended up taking it. Then I had Arizona and Colorado. Uh, over in the East, National League, I had the Mets, Atlanta, Philly, which is very much true how they battled. I thought until the Mets lost Jacob, that was they're probably going to win that division. Then you had Washington and the Marlins. And then in the Central, I had the Cardinals. I thought the Cardinals were going to take that division. They had that run. They just had a, a weak first half. Uh, Brewers second, Cubs third, Cincinnati fourth, and Pittsburgh fifth. Those were my predictions last year. And the thing is with predictions, you never know. Because a good example is Jacob DeGrom. I mean, if he was healthy, a full 32, yeah, that division is probably going to go to New York. I mean, come on, man. That guy's a stud. But when I look at the divisions this year... I always look at the divisions the same. I look at what teams did in the offseason, what they did to bolster their teams. Did they do enough? You know, did they do enough to make their team competitive and get them over into the promised land? It's very tough. It's very tough to look at because I look at hitting, pitching, um, but mainly I focus on, like, what did they do in the offseason? Did they do enough in the offseason to address their problems to help out this year? So that's kind of how I always look at things in that respect. But I also look at, you know, is the club already the base of the club, the foundation? 
like the Blue Jays and Houston and you know you see these teams year after year that are always 500 plus for a reason because they've got a great foundation minor leagues um they've got enough to draw from resources and everything like that so I also look at that I look at everything but pitching is huge pitching is a big deal when I make my decisions because if you look at the top ERAs we've talked about this before um, top ERAs will get you to the playoffs. And what I mean is, let's say, let's look at it. Dodgers were number one ERA. Giants were second. Brewers were third. Tampa Bay, Chicago White Sox, New York Yankees, Houston Astros, Atlanta Braves. Until you get to the Mets. That's eight teams right there were in the top ERA that ended up going to the playoffs. And the Mets were on the outside. You got Toronto, so on and so forth. But if you have good pitching, you're going to make it to the playoffs. It's just plain and simple i mean the red sox were ranked 15th in era but again it's hard to predict when teams are going to get hot they didn't really have the club they really put it together at the end of the year and they got hot at the right time that's you know when you start slow that's what you hope for uh, st louis is 12th so some good teams some good teams but what i'm saying is is pitching is everything if you don't got a deep pitching staff i'm not going to rate you that high and making the playoffs it just doesn't make sense so let's start off in the American League East. This division is, if not the most competitive division in baseball, you've got four or five teams that are pretty much probably going to the playoffs with the expansion. There's a good chance. Uh, Toronto, New York, Tampa, and Boston are awesome. I love Baltimore, but I'm going to knock Baltimore out of the way right away in this division. Obviously, they're going to come in fifth. That's what I have them listed for. I mean, I love Baltimore. We've talked about this a bunch. I think it's a great organization, but obviously they didn't do enough in the offseason, guys. Come on, man. They they ranked uh, 30th in ERA, 30th in bullpen, 29th most airs, but they got the number one uh, minor league system. So, hey, you know, Adelaide Rushman, he's going to be in rehab. Uh, John Means will be their opening day starter, but you know what? They just, you know, they got Jordan Lyles. They got a couple of catchers in the offseason. You know, it is what it is. So Baltimore fans, you're here for the ride. Um, Boston. Boston, I have fourth in the division. Uh, they were great average last year. Uh, their bullpen was ranked 13th. They're 15th in ERA. Uh, they got Rich Hill. They got Matt Stram. Great season um, in San Diego for Matt to see if he can get back to it. Nathan is your open day starter. But the way I looked at Boston in the offseason, I'm like, how? to me – you needed pitching. You're still a good team. Offensively, you're a stud team. But what did they do pitching-wise to take them to that next level? Well, they went and got Trevor Story. Well, that's not pitching. Uh, they got rid of Kyle Swerber. Okay, that's offense. And they got rid of Eduardo Rodriguez. That one was bad. That That's a big chip to your... You know, you're ranked 15th in ERA, and that's one of your, that's one of your guys. But they went and got James Paxson. Got him for one year. I always talk about one-year deals, how they're kind of questionable. They did get uh, Michael Wacha. So they got him. Uh, Jake Diekman from uh, Oakland. So they, uh, in a way, they have addressed pitching. But are these pitchers enough? You got rid of Garrett Richards. You, you've lost, uh, you got Rich Hill. But then Adam Octav- Ottavino is gone. So... I feel like they're pretty much the same staff. I don't think they're getting worse. I don't think that really puts them in the top 10 pitching staff, but maybe Boston's a question mark for me. Um, They really are, but I have them fifth. Now, Tampa Bay is my mystery team. I have, sorry, Ray fans, I got them third in the division. Obviously, I'm working my way up. Every year, Tampa burns my ass. It, it, it's just, you look at them on paper and you're like, there's no freaking way this team's going to be good. And they just destroy it. They're just a great organization. I've said it once. I've said it before. One of the best front offices in baseball. No doubt. I mean, come on, Wanda Franco. They're like, where the hell did he get this guy? But in the offseason, they got rid of a lot. Uh, Nelson Cruz is gone. Eh. Uh, Colin McHugh's gone. Eh. But they got rid of... Uh, what two starting pitchers, um, a relief pitcher and David Robinson. They picked up uh, Jason Adam and Corey Kluber. 
But again, this is an organization that you're just like, damn, man. And they were number one in everything last year. That's so, it's so weird. They're number one in average, 16th in home runs, second in runs, fourth in year rate, third best bullpen, sixth best ranked minors. And the reason I have to put them there is I just, I can't figure them out, man. <laughs> I mean, you look at them on paper, and you're like, this team isn't going to have a 40 home run hitter. Uh, its team isn't going to. And then also they got uh, Glass now is not going to be around. Uh, he's a 60-day elbow situation. He's recovering from Tommy John, so he's going to be down the road. Um, Randy Rosarina, you know, he's he's a great player, but what's really going to happen? What's really going to happen with his team? Um, oh, man. One of the things that I think people are not looking at is they do have a wealth of talent. And the opening day starter is a good example. Shane McClanahan. I think his time has arrived. This guy's ceiling is high. And there's talk about him being better than Tyler. Uh, Tampa's that team that bugs the crap out of me, guys. I'm telling you, I'm like, I wanted to pick them first. I wanted to pick them second. But I'm like, man, I can't tell what they're going to do. They're, st- they're a stacked team. Don't get me wrong. But this whole division is stacked. Except Baltimore. Sorry, Oreo fans. Toronto, New York, you know, boss, it's just frick, man. I just feel like, you know what, Tampa, you've had this run forever. I think I just, I, I don't know. I'm probably going to be wrong again. But uh, maybe it's their time to take the back seat for a little bit. Because the division is changing. Coming in second. Now, this is going to probably upset us, some of you, especially on the West or East Coast. Um, but hey, I don't know. I think there's too much drama going on with your organization right now, too many distractions. I picked the Yankees as second in the, the division. I'll tell you why. Yankees, six in the array, fourth in bullpen. You know, what are they going to do with DJ? On top of that, they've got to figure out what they're doing with him. They're, they're just, you got Anthony Rizzo, you got all these guys stacking up on the team. Where are you going to, is DJ going to be one of those people that's going to be part of the starting lineup all year? It's weird. Just, I say that because it's, when you look at their projected lineup right now, you don't really see him around. So with the Yankees, is when is DJ coming back? Is he going to be healthy again? I mean, last year, 268 was the worst of his career. Um... I don't know. Opening day starter, of course, Garrett Cole. But, I mean, you got Rizzo, you got Judge. Then you got this drama with Judge going on right now. Uh, Gene Carlo, he had a good season last year. He's got to keep it going. Gallo, you know, hey, Gallo, you still got a hit against the shift. So, you're going to hear him whine about that. Aaron Hicks. So, they've got, you know, this, their lineup, I think, is more mature and deeper. They're hitting. Pitching, you got Cole Montgomery, Savino, Cortez, uh, it's still a good pitching staff. You don't go from sixth best ERA and fourth best bullpen to junk. They're still going to be there. They're going to make playoffs. The Yankees are still going to be tough. Again, this is a division where you can talk about it. Uh, of course, I picked Toronto for first, but you can see Toronto win in 100, Yankees win in 98, Tampa Bay win in 97, and Boston win in 94. That's what's crazy about this division. You can literally see these teams being within six games of each other at the end of the season. It's going to be like that. That's how competitive it is. But I picked, um, I picked Toronto. I think Toronto went and did a lot in the off season and they're a good, they're a good organization. Toronto had 10th ERA and 16th bullpen. Now they did a lot of moving and shaking. Marcus Simeon's gone to Texas. Um, Robbie Ray left to Seattle. Steven Matz, St. Louis. Kirby Yates gone. You know, a couple other moves. Corey Dickerson. But they, you know, it's it's crazy. But they brought in Kevin Cosman. Hey, nice move there. And you see Kiki Uchi, left-handed starter. Uh, they also brought in Yimi Garcia from Houston. So they they have a good organization. I think they did address... In the offseason, their bullpen, their, I mean, the lineup's sick, guys. Listen, this is a sick lineup. 
Now, I know some people are going, oh, you're jumping on the Toronto Blue Jays bandwagon. Yeah, dude. <laughs> if you were, you, I don't know what you're smoking. I don't know where you've been. But have you watched this team over the last two or three years? They went and got Springer. They got Vladdy. Yeah, last year's MVP. I mean, Hernandez, Tiascar. Dude, Bo Bichette is legit. Uh, you got Chapman now and Kevin Bijou with more time under the belt. Uh, Danny Jansen's not bad back there. He, Lordy's Gurriel. I mean, this is a stacked team. And when you look at the starters, uh, Jose Barreras, Kevin Galsman, uh, Hyun Jin Yu, uh, Alec Manoa, there's, uh, again, Kikuchi. This is a good staff, guys. This is a good staff. And you talk their bullpen. Even though Jordan Romano isn't going to be able to start the season, but hey, Meza, Garcia, uh, Dulles, I mean, this is a good bullpen. And they've got a pretty deep minors. So I just going to go with Toronto with this division. I would like to see it be shaken up. But again, the way this division is, just like last year, I could see Tampa winning it. I could see New York winning it. I could see maybe Boston winning it. But I just think the pitching is really good in this division with Yankees and Tampa Bay. I feel like Toronto stepping up with their pitching. This it, is either the year that Toronto makes that next step or they're going to have to do some trades to get there. Yankees are looking good, though. I really I want to say this now. If anyone else wins it, it's going to be the Yankees. I feel like the Yankees, there's a lot of distractions, but if they put things together, this can be a phenomenal club. I mean, it really can be a phenomenal club. But those are my predictions. Toronto first, Yankees second, Tampa Bay third, Boston fourth, Baltimore will be fifth. Move on over to the American League Central Division. I think this division is pretty predictable, but we're going to start from the bottom. I have fifth, Kansas City. I like Kansas City a lot, uh, but their 21st ERA, 19th bullpen, I don't think they addressed enough of that. I mean, just going out and getting Zach Greinke, that's great. I mean, that's, I guess that's going to be for, like, Kind of what St. Louis is doing. You know, they brought in they brought in um, Albert Pujols. You know, a little, little swan song for him. But, you know, when you have an ERA 21st and you got a really bad bullpen, it just makes me wonder what you're going to do to make yourself better. You know, how, how are you going to make it better? Now, Bobby Witt Jr., that, he's going to be fun to watch. Salvador Perez, he's not going to hit the home runs he hit last year. They're still a decent hitting team, I think, in some respects. He's got, they were ninth in average last year. They don't got a lot of pop. They're ranked 27th. That's crazy. They're ranked 27th with Perez hitting the crap out of the ball. Um, but, I mean, after Grinky, what do you got? I mean, Keller, Singer, I mean, there's really not a lot there. And then with their bullpen, I don't know. Did they do enough with their bullpen in the offseason? I don't think they did enough. I really didn't think they did enough to put them in position. And what I mean is they went and got Grinky, yes, but they got rid of Greg Holland and um, Taylor Clark they signed for one year for 975, so they didn't really, like, bulk up. So I picked Casey fifth, and I got Cleveland fourth. Uh, Cleveland, they had one of the better bullpens in baseball. But Cleveland, I just don't think has enough to be competitive in this division. What I mean is for a playoff spot. I don't think Cleveland is a playoff bound team. Did they do enough in the off season? Well, let's take a look in the off season. Did they focus on pitching? Well, Shaw, they gave that extension, but then they signed, uh, no, that's it. They got rid of Nick Whitgren and Roberto Perez is gone. So they cleared a little bit of money, but they didn't do anything to address their pitching. They didn't do anything that makes you go, ooh, this is going to be, uh, you know, this is the team. This is the team that's going to make a run for at least a playoff spot. You need pitching. And you need pitching in this division because Chicago's, I, I mean, I already told you, they're, they're going to be first. They're going to be first. So we're just talking about the, the rest of the teams in the division, but... Is a Cleveland, I just don't think you did anything. I mean, really, what did you do for the Spiders? It, 
maybe it'll be a little fun lineup. I mean, Framino Reyes and Jose Ramirez are going to be fun to watch. Uh, see what Miles Straw can do this year. Austin Hedges, I've seen him play for the Padres. He's, he's just a defensive guy. He's, he's going to get a little bit of pop. So there's not much going on on this team because after Bieber, who do you got? Zach Plezak? Cal Contrell, Aaron Saval. I mean, there's not there's nothing there to be really shake a stick at, guys. And the same thing with Minnesota. So even Minnesota, I had a tough time with Minnesota um, picking them. I have them ranked third. And the reason why is I feel like they did things. They're kind of my head-scratching team in a way. Obviously, they went and got Carlos Correa. But Minnesota was ranked 17th average, 5th in home runs, 14th in runs. So, yeah, that puts them as a better offensive team. They went and got Dylan Bundy, a starting pitcher who's 29 years old. But, again, one-year contract, not a lot of confidence there. Uh, Chris Archer, Joe Smith. But what did they get rid of? Well, Michael Pineda left. Uh, Alex Colomb and Drelto Simmons. So there goes defense. So when I look at Minnesota, I'm like, man, this is a team that is ranked 26th in the ERA um, and 21st in bullpen. These moves in the offseason, I mean, your bullpen was 24th. That's no bueno, guys. I don't pick them. You know, maybe they're going to scratch it out with Cleveland, but they're not going to win the division. Come on, guys. I love the Minnesota Stadium. I love the team. I love Buxton at center. Uh, you got Polanco and Carlos Correa. I mean, this is a good hidden team. They're going to be fun offensively. Uh, Max Kepler, Gary Sanchez. But, I mean, when you look at their pitching, you got Joe Ryan, Sonny Gray. Yeah, there's some inning guys, but after that, what you got? You know, what's left on this? Chris Archer is a question mark. Um, Dylan Bundy. You haven't really addressed your bullpen. So, I mean, bullpen... Taylor Rogers is your guy, but I mean, after that, you, well, is your setup going to be Duffy and or Jax? I, I don't understand. So, unfortunately, I don't see the Twins doing much. In second place, I got Detroit. I did think Detroit did a lot in the offseason. I think they did address a lot of things to make themselves turn the corner. And you got to remember, we talked about Spencer Torkelson being the future and Miguel Cabrera getting older. Um, but what did Detroit do? They had a 17th ERA and a 22nd bullpen. So did, did they address that in the offseason? Well, they went and got Javier Baez. But they also got Eduardo Rodriguez. So that was a big one. Five years, $77 million. So to me, I'm like, wow, that really addresses your ERA. Your offense was 16th in average and 24th in HR. So Javier Baez is going to help you out. And he's going to help you out on defense. So, so Detroit, they addressed their hitting. They're ranked um, 16th in average and 24th home run, so getting Javier Baez is going to help. Eduardo Rodriguez, absolutely. You're pitching with 17th in the array and 22nd in bullpen. That helps out a lot. And then they got Andrew Chaffin, who's a relief pitcher. That's going to help out too. Um, Michael Pineda, let's see what we get out of him, the old vet. That's why they gave him one year. But they also went and uh, picked up a Willie Peralta, who's in the minors right now, so we'll see how that works out. But they got rid of uh, Matt Boyd to San Francisco. But I think what they've done in, with these moves that makes them a better club, why not? It, they look like a good club to me uh, when you look at them on, on paper. But I think they did address some concerns there. That makes them a better team. Does it make them better in the White Sox? No. You got Badu, Grossman, Javier Baez. Miggy's going to be in there. Spencer Torgerson is now taking over. Jonathan Shoop. Uh, there it is. But, I mean, when you look at the rotation, though, it's good getting Eduardo Rodriguez. But what are you going to get out of Casey, uh, Matt Manning, Tyler Alexander? What are you going to get out of these guys? Those, those guys in the bullpen really need to step up. Um, I think they're turning a corner, but, you know, Gregory Soto, Garcia in the bullpen, Fulmer, Cisnero, I mean, what are you going to get out of these guys? They really need to step up. So I have Chicago White Sox winning the division again. White Sox are still a loaded team, guys. Uh, what they do in the offseason, well, here's a team that was 5th in ERA and 10th in bullpen. 
A great hitting team, fifth and average, 19th home run. They're still awesome. Don't get me wrong. They got Joe Kelly. They got Josh Harrison. Um, as of this, as of right now, their opening day starter is to be announced. It could change by the time you listen to this, but they got rid of Carlos Rodon. Guy throws a no hitter and you kick him to the curb. But they picked up Kendall Graveman, Joe Kelly, um, Larry Garcia, extended three years. But they got rid of Ryan Tapera. And they got Josh Harrison. But this is a team that still is pretty solid. They're not much different than what they, they were last year. And they're still going to be the club to beat. In a division that's not, you know, I told you guys, I'm, I've heard a couple White Sox fans kind of call me out on this, but it's not a competitive division, guys. In fact, it's the weakest division in um, the American League. But, I mean, their lineup's going to be great still. You got Anderson, Luis Robert, Yon Moncada, Jose Abreu, Elo Jimenez, I mean, Grandel, AJ Pollock, Gavish, Josh Harrison. I mean, they're going to hit the shit out of the ball, guys. It's no doubt. Uh, but what's going on with Lance Lynn? Is he gonna, when is he going to be healthy? Uh, um, Lucas Gilito. Cease. I mean, these are still solid pitchers. Dylan Cease. Um, their starters are fine. Their bullpen's good. Liam Hendricks is going to be there. Going to have Bummer and Graveman involved as, as your closers. They're still a solid bullpen. Got a little bit of injury themes, but I don't. I think when you compare them to the rest of the division, they're still a better team. Detroit probably is going to give them a little, a little run for their money, but I pick Chicago White Sox to be the American League Central again. Detroit second, Minnesota third, Cleveland fourth, and KC fifth. Now let's move into the American League West. Ooh, this is exciting. This is going to be a fun division, guys. This division is getting better and better. And, you know, with this division, it was very difficult in respects. I think there is a change in the guard. There is a change in momentum in this division. But this division became much more competitive. Uh, Houston, Seattle, L.A., Texas, um, with the exception of Oakland. Oakland has become like the Baltimore of this division. And let's just start off by jumping in. Ranked fifth, I have Oakland. I think Oakland has way too much stuff on the plate right now. In regards to their organization, uh, I mean, how can you bring in fans? How can you bring in confidence to your team when you're obviously trying to leave Oakland? Uh, just all types of problems going on with Oakland. Now, another thing with Oakland, uh, opening day starter will be Frankie Montez. But, you know, the fire cell along with Cincinnati in the offseason, uh, Starlin Marte went to the Mets. Mark kind of left to the Mets. Andrew Chaffin left to Detroit. Yan Gomes left. Uh, Jake Diekman, Josh Harrison, uh, Sergio Romo, which is fastballs the same speed of his slider. Jed Lowry, which is not really the biggest losses, but you pretty much just got rid of a ton of salary. And in the offseason, what did you address? You had an 18th ranked bullpen, 13th ranked ERA. They're still a decent pitching team but they're going to be dropping down on that. They weren't a good fielding team. Their minors aren't that good. Um, hitting, they're 22 in average. It's a pitcher's park. So you should have a decent pitching, but I don't think they're, they've done enough to really give themselves a competitive advantage or to give themselves a chance for playoff. Because ultimately, with all these predictions I'm doing for you guys, um, it's mainly about are you positioning yourself to make the playoffs? Because they've expanded it to 14, so seven in each league. So now as a team, you're going, okay, there's three division winners. That means there's four playoff spots. So I'm battling with these other, you know, <clears throat> eliminate the other, I'm battling with these other 12 teams for four playoff spots. And you got to kind of eliminate four of those teams like Baltimore and uh, Oakland. And, you know, as you're going for the playoffs, so you're kind of down to maybe, you know, a good six teams that you got to battle with. So it's very interesting for the playoffs. But I don't think Oakland put themselves in position um, for the playoffs. I don't even think they're even going to be playoff run. I just don't see how they made their bullpen better and their pitching staff better, which they need in this division. Uh, this division with pitching is really decent. Uh, L.A. is going to be a lot better. Houston's great pitching. And Seattle's got an eighth-ranked bullpen. So what did you do to compete within your own division? I don't think you did it uh, um, enough. But let's check out their opening day lineup. Um, Oakland A's opening day lineup. Projected lineup. Still going to be fun. Uh, 
I don't know, Sean Murphy, Seth Brown. I, I just, there's, it's a questionable lineup. And then when you look at the, the rotation, Irving, Jeffries, Blackburn, I mean, it's a pitcher stadium. These guys should be able to do something, but it's the bullpen that you're looking at, you know, with uh, Trevino and, and Acevedo in that bullpen that hasn't really been the greatest bullpen. I think it just kept them above water. Their 18th rank bullpen, it's not going to work. So I got you guys fifth. Now, at fourth, I did the Texas Rangers. Now, I know a lot of people are like, hey, Texas did a lot in the offseason. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. I will give Texas, they're on the up and up. And this is why I said this division is going to be super competitive because Texas took that step towards making themselves better. But here's a team that 23 ranked ERA and 17th ranked bullpen last year. Uh, middle of the road when it comes to errors. Their minors are ranked 11th. Uh, I think they got John Gray as their opening day uh, pitcher. But they had the worst hitting, uh, 29th, one of the worst, uh, 29th ranked average, 26 home runs, 20 runs. So this is a team that does not generate offense at all. And how did they address that? Well, first let's look at their offense. Yeah, they went and got Corey Seager, 10 years, $325 million. That is addressing your offense and addressing your shortstop position, two for one. That's why they gave him so much money. So some of you are wondering, you know, why did Corey Seager get that much money? Because he's a shortstop. If he was a outfielder, he wouldn't have got that much money. But shortstops that can hit, that are solid, and a left-hander, dude, his value is up there. So they got him. Uh, they went and got Marcus Simeon. Good moves on offense. Brad Miller picked him up. Uh, you know, what other offensive things? They got Cole Calhoun, you know, a little veteran experience. So, um, I mean, Simeon and Seager definitely address your hitting. I think you're a better hitting squad. Does it take you from 29th average and 26 home runs and 20 runs uh, you're probably now going to break in the top 20. That should put you in the top 20. But is that enough? Because when you look at the teams that are competitive in your division, um, with the exception of Seattle, Seattle had the 30th ranked batting average. So it makes you wonder if average really is impactful in this division, more so than the pitching. But what did you do with pitching? Well, they went and got John Gray. They did address that. But they got rid of Nick Martinez. So you're like, okay. Uh, but they did go get rid of also Jordan Lyles. But they picked up Garrett Richards from Boston. So you're kind of like, oh, they added a piece, they lost a piece. Um, but they did go out also get Martin Perez and then a couple other guys in the minors, uh, Greg Holland. So to me, when I look at it, I'm going, you didn't really address your pitching. Uh, 23rd ranked ERA, 17th ranked bullpen. Bullpen's where it's going to keep you in the race. So I, I feel like Texas did make themselves competitive. Possibly, if things fall together, maybe a playoff spot. But through 162 games, I have them as fifth. But their lineup's going to be fun. Again, you got uh, Brad Miller, who needs to get that average up. Uh, Marcus Seaman, Corey Seager, Mitch Garver, uh, Nate Lowe, uh, Cole Calhoun, uh, Willie Calhoun. So they've got some pop. They're going to be hitting the ball this year, guys. Uh, but it's the pitching. Uh, you got after John Gray, what do you got? Perez, Dunning, Hearn. So it's kind of like, mm. and then the, again, that's that bullpen we talked. I talked about Garrett Richards, uh, Barlow, Patton, Holland, Bush. Um, how are they going to be able to? Are they going to be able to pull it off in the back? Can they improve from 17th rank and be much better? We'll have to wait and see. Now coming in at third. I have the Los Angeles Angels, a team I haven't really been able to talk about for years because usually they pour their money into offensive positions and it doesn't work out. But for the first time, the Angels definitely address their pitching in a big way. Uh, we've talked about a lot on the podcast, the steps they've taken uh, in the offseason. They drafted 20 pitchers with 20 picks in the 21 Major League Draft. Uh, signings all over the place, seven international pitchers. So... This is a team that was ranked 24th in bullpen, 22nd in ERA. So you're going, okay, if I'm going to be competitive, if I'm going to go for a playoff spot, I know I got an offense. You know, obviously, you know, we're ranked 10th in average, 19th home run, 17 runs. We're getting Mike Trout back. Uh, by the way, uh, Sohei's the opening day starter. So it's interesting. What did they do to address that poor pitching? Well, they... Racio Iglesias extension four years fifty eight, Noah Syndergaard, 
Um, we'll see what they get out of him. One year, $21 million, That's a lot for a guy that I don't think he's worth that. But, hey, they, they addressed it. Aaron Loop, they, they addressed it there. Uh, Ryan Tapera. Michael Lawrenson. Archie Bradley. Uh, and then uh, they got rid of Steve uh, Cichek. So they got rid of him. They got rid of Dylan Bundy. Um, Alex Cobb to San Francisco. But they spent a lot of money and they did address the pitching. And that's going to help fill in the bullpen where it's at right now. So when I look at the Angels, I'm going, wow, this is a good club. This is a better club than they were last year. And they put themselves, uh, I think, in a playoff contention spot. They, they're going to be funner to watch. I'm really curious how uh, Trout's going to look. Because honestly, as of this posting, guys, uh, Trout has no extra base hits in spring training. No doubles, no triples, no HRs. Uh, they're talking about that ankle injury. The place that it will affect him will be in his power. And that's why they're kind of like, is he back? Is he... Is this going to be the, the Mike Trout? Or are we going to see the pool holes? The second half pool holes of his career. Um, there's a lot of question marks above Mike Trout. Which we've never had to discuss that. We've never really had to deal with like is Mike Trout 100% because uh, we're used to him being the best player in baseball um, but overall again when we talk pitching they address that ERA 22nd ranked ERA uh, their offense Shohei and then once Trout comes back and see what we get out of him Jared Walsh kid's got a stick Anthony Rendon I don't think he's going to be uh, tanking it as much Anthony get a full healthy year under him and they're going to be really tough, the one through four. Uh, heck, you can even throw in maybe Brandon Marsh, uh, Tyler Wade. Who knows where they're going to fit in the lineup. But for your pitching, uh, Shohei is your pitcher. He's your ace. Patrick Sandoval, see what he can put up this year. No Syndergaard again, question mark. But you got Michael Lawrence in. You've got pitching You've in regards to, you know, this this day and age, it doesn't matter if you have a four or three, five O ERA as a starter because it all goes to the bullpen. What do you got in the bullpen? Hey, man, Racio Iglesias definitely adds lightning uh, to that situation. Um, Absolutely, man. Extension on him. Keep him there. But he's one of those guys that's going to be anchoring that back end for a long time. Uh, Mayers, Tapira, uh, Loop, Warren. That bullpen's looking pretty good, if you ask me. It's not bad, man. It's pretty impressive looking bullpen. It, better than last year. I, I think 17th ranked bullpen. They might be entering in the top 10 this year in bullpen and getting their ERA around the 15 range. That's going to make uh, Angels more competitive. I think they are a potential playoffs position team, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. So I got them ranked as third. Now, I know you're dying to know the first and second spot. Now, I had a lot of problems with this, um, trying to figure this out. And obviously, this division, to me, is going to come down to Seattle and Houston. But who's going to get that, that spot? I picked... Seattle is number two. I know everyone's jumping on the Seattle train. I am jumping on the Seattle train. I think they're great. They had an eighth-ranked bullpen last year, 16th ERA. Not the best ERA team, but a great minors. They're ranked number two minors, but the worst hitting team in baseball with a 30 average. No real pop. Middle of the road at 13, 22 runs. So their hitting was a big problem. Pitching is what got them there. What did they do in the offseason? Robbie Ray is going to help out a lot, guys. That's a big one. Sergio Romo. I don't know, man. He's 39. Fastball, the same speed as the slider. That one, I'm curious. Uh, Steven Zuzza, they got in the minors. So I don't know, again, with their um, pitching, maybe not a lot of adjustments were needed, but they got rid of pitching. Uh, again, Kikuchi went to Toronto. James Paxton's gone. Uh, Tyler Anderson left. So you're losing some pieces there. Uh, Joe Smith left. Uh, and I think uh, Doolittle left. And I, I think I'm missing another player, but you lost pitching, but did you gain in hitting? Uh, not really. They didn't really address their hitting, um, which is interesting, because uh, Rodriguez did make the their number one pro, or their number one prospect, one of their top prospects, number three ranked player uh, in Major League Baseball uh, for the minors. I think he in Adelaide or. All right there, ranked in the top three minor league prospects. But he made the team. But with Kelnick and the rest of them, they've got a hit. 
they've got a hit. I get, um, I get they're going to be a better club. Absolutely. Uh, they're going to be a playoff bound team. Uh, Julio Rodriguez. Let's see what you get out of him. The kid's just lightning in the bottle. Um, but again, is this offense enough to generate? I mean, Tom Murphy behind the plate. Is he going to be able to, is Ty France, even though he was the MVP last year for the team, what's he going to, what's he going to put up? Um, I guess you got Adam Frazier. If he hits like he did in Pittsburgh, you know, you're looking at this law offense, you're going, you know, JP Crawford and Kelnick and, and Jesse Winker. So they went and did got, you know, some, there's still the, the core and the pieces there, but is it enough? Is it enough to take them from a rank 30th into a top 10? Again, you're, you're ranked 30th in hitting and that's your lineup. That's your opening day lineup. So it doesn't like jump out at you. Like, you know, Hey, these guys are going to be offensively a pain in the ass. Um, you rank 30th average. Hopefully they can get, they got to be in the top 20 in order to be competitive with that pitching. And I have Houston winning the division. Uh, Houston Astros are still a solid organization, despite any pieces that they've missed or any controversies they've been in 2017 guys. That was a long time ago. Uh, Houston was number one average hitting team last year, ninth in home runs, number one in runs, seventh in ERA, 15th in bullpen, not the best fielding team and not a really good minor league organization. Um, I think their bullpen is their concern. They're having a good spring training, or at least Justin Verlander is. Uh, Verlander's going to be back. But really, I think when it comes down to this division, you're looking at Houston, Seattle, and L.A. Uh, I thought Houston was going to go downhill last year, but they're still a solid organization. I mean, you don't have the run like they have and just end up turning around and going backwards that quick. But uh, what did they do in the offseason regarding pitching? Well, Justin Verlander's back, so that's good. But you got rid of Kendall Graveman. Uh, Hector Neris, they picked up from Philly. Uh, Zachary Key's gone. Um, you got Yimmy Garcia, who is also gone. Brooks Rally is also gone. So some things have changed. They, I don't know if they really super addressed it, but they, they are a good organization as it is. Uh, they're deep pitching. I don't think that's going to be a problem for them in this division. Because seriously, when you look at this division, you're going to need a little bit more pitching, and that's going to keep you in there. But there was seventh ranked ERA last year, so you don't go from seventh to the, you know, twenty fifth in one off season. So they're going to be a tough team. They're definitely going to be a tough team. Uh, their batting lineup, it's still a solid lineup, guys. Uh, Jose Altuve, as much as you hate him, the, the guy is a constant run producer, hitter with pop. Uh, Michael Brantley, Alex Bregman, you know, he's going to have a better season. Uh, Jordan Alvarez is always there. Yearly is always there. Kyle Tucker, Martin Maldonado. I mean, this is a good hitting team up and down. And then when you look at the rotation with, you know, if they can get a decent return from Justin Verlander this year, along with Framber Valdez, um, this is a good team with Jose and Luis Garcia and, and Jake. I mean, this is a solid team still. Um, those are guys that will get you into the, you know, keeping the games. And Ryan Presley, and when you're looking at the bullpen, the way they got it set up with Neris, Stanek, uh, Javier, uh, Anole, it's still pretty, you know, with Phil Maiden in there, this is a good bullpen. This is still going to be a tough club. And, you know, the thing with Dusty is he, he always seems to wield the magic. So I'm picking Houston first, Seattle second, Angels third, Texas fourth, Oakland fifth. Let's move on over to the National League West. Um, I think with this one, you got to go into it and think about a couple things. What happened in the offseason with these teams? Did they change things enough? And you know who didn't really change a lot of stuff in the offseason? Yo mama. So with this division, I start off with Arizona being at um, fifth position. Arizona pulling up the rear. You're talking about a team that was 26th in average, 29th in home runs, 25th in, 25th in runs, 29th in ERA, 29th in bullpen. One of the worst fielding teams. Um, uh, Madison Bumgarner will be their opening day pitcher. So he's their starter. But I Arizona, you're. this is a competitive division. This is a division where you got the Dodgers, the Padres, and San Francisco. Uh, you, you know, it's not enough. They went and got Mark Mellinson. That's going to help them not suck as bad. 
Uh, Ian Kennedy, he's 37. Who knows what you're going to get out of that? Zach Davies, who knows what you're going to get out of that? But you got rid of Taylor Clark, uh, Cole Calhoun. So there's not much going on in Arizona. So uh, obviously they're not even going to be going for a playoff spot, in my opinion. It's just, it's a blot team. I'm sorry, Arizona. You guys aren't going to be in the mix for a while. Uh, fourth place, I have Colorado. I think Colorado is a, a team that is obviously on the up and up. Uh, Chris Bryant went to a hitting stadium. And, you know, I was thinking about this last time with Chris Bryant. I'm like, he made a brilliant move by going to Colorado because by the time that seven years is up, he's going to have good enough stats to sign another six-year contract or five-year contract because he's going to be in Colorado. So he's kind of a smart move in that respect. But Colorado, uh, your bullpen was 26 and your airway was 25th. So that's where I'm going to focus first. And what did they do in the offseason? Um, Alex Colomb. Okay. Chad Cool, and uh, they extended a contract on Hoolies. But I mean, really, what did they do? They really didn't address their, their, you know, their their pitching, which is this division. I mean, with the Giants, the Padres, and Dodgers, this is a pitching division. I mean, Dodger Stadium, Padres Stadium, are uh, pitchers' ballparks. Same with San Francisco, and then you got Colorado's a hitters' ballpark where they were eighth in average and twenty first in runs. But I mean, getting Chris Bryant's great. Uh, getting Trevor's story, getting rid of him, cleared up space just to get Chris Bryant in there. Um, we got rid of John Gray. So that cleared up money. It's almost like they cleared up money just to get Chris Bryant in there. And we talked about this before. It's like, okay, you had money before. If you had money this much, maybe they didn't because they weren't able to get rid of Trevor and cleared up. But, you know, you go and get a third baseman, you lose a third baseman. So I'm sure Rocky fans aren't happy with that. But... Kyle Freeman will be their opening day starter. I have them at the fourth position. Third place, I have the San Francisco Giants. I think the Giants are still a solid organization. Uh, they were fantastic last year. Number two ERA, first in bullpen. Again, you're not going to go from first bullpen and second ERA into the worst pitching staff in baseball. San Francisco did a lot in offseason. This is a confusing division for me, just similar to the Miracle League East. Uh, it Dude, I see the Padres possibly if things help and health wise, if the right pitchers fall into place with the Padres and they could be taking this division. Dodgers still loaded, San Francisco still loaded, but they did a ton in the off season. Uh, San Francisco's kind of scary in a way. I, I had a problem picking this division um, or picking them because they are still incredibly solid as a pitching staff. Uh, they got rid of Chris Bryant. They got rid of Kevin Gosman. Okay. Big chunk of change right there. You're talking like almost $292 million in contract moved off the books. But then they went and got Carlos Rodon. Boom. Anthony DiScafellini. I'm going to kill that name for the rest of my life. The extension. Uh, same thing with Alex Wood. But then they went and got Alex Cobb. Um, Jock Peterson is a little offensive pump. But Matt Boyd from Detroit. Hey. Boom. Carlos Martinez who's in the minors. So they they added more pitching, which is interesting because usually a team like this, you're going to be like, oh, they're going to be worried about their offense. No, they were seventh in average, second in home runs, sixth in runs. So <laughs> there's a reason why they, they had the run they did. Uh, but when you look at position players, like I said, Jock Peterson came in there. So maybe that will offset a little bit of what Chris Bryant did. Um, other position players, they got rid of Donovan Solano. So I think they can sacrifice players, but they really... Again, this is a scary team. Um, it is a pitcher's park. They did address their pitching, and they're still scary. They're, I mean, don't get me wrong. They're still a scary team. I had a hard time picking this division because, because they bulked up on their pitching. They kind of, you know, when you look at other teams, though what I've mentioned, you know, they didn't necessarily go in – you know, they just kind of added some chips here and there and they traded some people away, but they didn't really go crazy per se. You know what I'm saying? Like when you look at teams that really poked up with their pitching, uh, Giants definitely are one of those teams. They did a lot. And when you look at that projected lineup or through Skrimsky and Brandon Crawford, Belt's going to be injured, uh, Tom Stella, you know, when they get them back healthy, but you got Peterson, Duggar. I mean, this is a good club. This is still a really good club. Um, and then again, their bullpen is a solid pin. Uh, they're going to be, yeah, they're still going to be tough. Uh, Rogers, Duvall, McGee, Moranto, Garcia, all those guys, that bullpen is, is good. So San Francisco, I have you at third. Moving on to number two, 
I'm going with the Padres. Um, I think a lot of you aren't surprised I picked LA for number one. Uh, Padres are the team that are kind of my mystery question team. Listen, it's a pitcher's park. They're not a good hitting team. They were 27th in average, and they're going to be without Tatis. 23rd in HRs, uh, 14th in runs, 14th ERA, but 5th best bullpen in baseball. Uh, what did the Padres do? What did the Padres do? Well, pitching, I think it's kind of a mixed bag with them. And the reason I say that is, what are they going to get out of certain pitchers? Mike Clevenger is not going to be back for a little while. Um, and then when you look around the first base position, uh, I think, they're, like I said, they're read the writing on the wall uh, with with Eric Hosmer. Uh, they went and got Luke Voigt, and they got Matt Beatty. I don't know. I think they're kind of looking at trading him out. Uh, his popularity has waned, and he hasn't really come through. Uh, if you want to compare him to his contract, but the Padres lineup is going to be interesting because Tatis is going to be out for a little while. What are they going to get at Trent Grisham? Uh, Machado is always going to be solid. Jake Cronenworth is becoming a really good diamond in the rough. Luke Voigt, if he stays healthy, he's going to give you 25-35. Um, again, with the Hosmer situation, uh, I don't know what they're going to do uh, because you got Matt Beatty now. So, uh, big question marks also are with Jerks and Profar. He's got to hit way better he's a multi-position player but you got to do more man and uh, cam at shortstop is going to fill in until um, tatis returns but he's got to hit too and those are t two keys for the padres profile and kim um you've got your main players you got your machados you know those in the voids and the hosmers are going to put up their numbers uh, will myers is going to put up their numbers but you really need those guys to pull pull in the bottom of the lineup, especially Jerkson. They extended his contract over a year ago or whatever and gave more money. You got to be there, man. But the key for the Padres is health. Uh, Mike Clevenger, when he comes back, hopefully he'll come back to his old way. It's going to, Mike's going to take, you know, maybe a couple months, guys. It, it, you might not see, it's going to take him a little while to come back, but you Darvish, he needs to go back to his Chicago days uh, and pitch better. Joe Musgrove's going to be there. Picking up Sean Minea, that's big you added a chip in there uh, Blake Schneel whenever they get him back so again if Blake comes back healthy and pitches good with Clevenger and all these guys work out this is a sick sick rotation um, this is one of the better rotations in baseball but again uh, what did the Padres do in the offseason to address their fifth rank bullpen and 14th rank ERA well they did go get Nick Martinez from Texas uh, Luis Garcia and like I said, we we just talked to other pitchers. Sean Minea, they picked up. So they're addressing the pitching, and they still got solid pitching. But hitting-wise, what did they do? Uh, well, again, they got rid of Mark Melanson. They got, uh, they got rid of Tommy Pham, which I think it was time for Pham to go. Uh, he didn't really work out for him. Daniel Hudson, Matthew Stram. So they did kind of uh, sacrifice a little bit of the chips on the bullpen. But hitting-wise... Are they a better hitting team? I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell if this is going to be a better hitting team. So, first place, I've got the Dodgers. I think the Dodgers are going to be the team. A uh, team going not only to the playoffs, uh, but possibly going to the World Series, and possibly winning the World Series. Dave Roberts already called it. Um, they're still a solid team. This is a first in bull, first in ERA in Major League Baseball, second in bullpen, 11th in average, fourth in HRs, fourth in runs, uh, 10th in errors, most errors, and a middle of the road, um, middle of the road, what do you call it? Uh, minor league organization. But the Dodgers did a shitload in off season. They did some amazing amount of movement. Uh, obviously Corey Seager left, but they brought in Freddie Freeman. Uh, Max Scherzer left, uh, but they extended Chris Taylor. Uh, Joe Kelly left, but they got Clayton Kershaw, who's pitching pretty good in the spring training right now. They extended or gave him a one-year contract, $17 million. But then they got rid of Kenley Jansen, Corey Nibel, uh, But then they went and got Andrew Hinney and Tyler Anderson, uh, Daniel Hudson. But then they got rid of Danny Duffy. I mean, I mean, extended Danny Duffy, excuse me. Um, but they got, pool, got rid of Pujols. I think that was a good move. Um, not No reason to keep Pujols, but... Dodgers are solid, man. Uh, guaranteed World Series by Dave Roberts. Opening day starter, Walker Buehler. 
So it's going to be Dodgers, Padres, Giants, Colorado, and Arizona. Let's move on over to the National League Central Division. I'm going to put Pittsburgh last. I don't think that's a surprise for any of us. Uh, Pittsburgh, I like the organization, but they really did not spend any money in the offseason, and they hardly did anything to address all their concerns. 27th average, 30, 30th ranked home runs, 30 last in runs, 28th in ERA, 23rd in bullpen, last in errors. But, hey, it's got one of the better minor leagues at ranked at fourth. JT Brubaker will be their opening day starter. Uh, yeah, you guys are last place. Uh, Cincinnati Reds might be battling for it. Uh, it's been exciting and super fun watching Joey Votto on social media. Dude, he's awesome. But this team, you know, the fire cell they went through. Nick Castellanos is gone. Uh, they got rid of Michael Lawrenson, uh, Michael Gibbons. But they brought in Donovan Solano, Hunter Strickland, Colin Moran, but uh, and Tommy Pham. But this this is not a like a club. Your 27th ranked bullpen. I don't think he did enough in the offseason. I really don't think he did. I think you guys are going to be down there battling with Pittsburgh, possibly. Still a good hitting team because it's a hitter's ballpark. Six in average, six home runs. Major League, ninth in runs. But that year A, you're kind of like the Colorado Rockies of the National League Central. Um, I like them. I would Hopefully they can do some moves before the All-Star break and the trade deadline and put them in position for a playoff run. I mean, just get a, a playoff spot. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Uh, when you look at the West, you look at the East, and you look at the Central, you know what? If you can be a 500 team, you're probably going to be able to make the playoffs. But Cincinnati, I got them ranked as fourth. I got the Cubs as third. Um, Cubs as third, I I like them in that spot. I think the Cubs, as much as they went through last year, um, and they're, the fire sales going in the offseason, they did, did, I don't think they're going to be that bad. I think they're going to be a 500 club. They really can be. They're 27th area last year, 20th in bullpen. Um, opening day starter will be Kyle Hendricks. Uh, let's see. They went and got pitching with Marcus Stroman, uh, catching in Ian Gomes. They got Jonathan Villar. They went and got Drew Smiley, uh, Michael Gibbons. Andrelton Simmons is locking in at shortstop. David Robinson for the bullpen. Chris Martin, Daniel Norris. So, it, I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, they, I would have to say, Absolutely, with all their craziness and moves, they did address pitching. They did go after, I mean, having Eldrelton Simmons at shortstop helps your pitching, uh, helps your defense. Tenth most, tied for tenth for most errors in the league. Um, hitting wise, you're still going to be a decent hitting team. Um, you were a good hitting, your 24th rank last year. You're playing in Chicago, you're going to get some pop, but Chicago might be that team that surprises people that pops in with a playoff spot. I think they're going to be about a 500 club if they add a few more hitters. I mean, C.S. Suzuki is going to be fun to watch also on that club if he comes out hitting well, really well. But you can obviously see that the Cubs made strides to be competitive, absolutely. And then I have, uh, you know, when it came to Milwaukee and St. Louis, I had a really hard time on this because St. Louis, I feel like, could be sneaky. I think they could just be sneaky good right now and... Um, they were ranked 11th ERA, 11th bullpen, uh, 13th e average, 15th home runs, 20th runs. They're kind of the middle of the road team, but they've got Adam Rainwright as their opening day starter. They're still a good team. They got Drew uh, Verhagen from the Nippenham Fighters. A uh, good rotation with Flaherty, Rainwright, Mats, uh, Dakota, uh, Miles, uh, Jordan Hick. Uh, Jordan is back. Um, throwing 102 and that's the thing I think when it comes to pitching they did kind of address in the offseason they went and got Steven Matz guys um, what else they do they, I mean they got rid of they didn't really move and shake a lot uh, I think they with Corey Dickerson they're dressing outfield and Pujols I don't know you know I think Pujols is just kind of like a he's not going to give you much guys he's not going to give you much but I think St. Louis is still a great managed manage organization. Um, one of the best front offices in baseball. Even though with the drama with Mike Schilt uh, is gone in the cloud above that. I think Cardinal fans are great fans. And they're going to look forward to Albert Pujols and his retirement party. But they are better looking than the Cubs at Cincinnati and Pittsburgh for sure. So I give them second position. I give Milwaukee number one. Um... 
but before before I forget, let's look at the opening day roster for the Cardinals before I jump to Milwaukee. I mean, Cardinals are going to be fun to watch. Um, they're ranked 13th in average and 15th in home runs, but dude, Dylan Carson getting more experience on the belt. He's fun to watch. Goldschmidt always is great. Uh, Tyler O'Neill, Nolan Arenado, and this is a pitcher's park, man. These guys are hit the ball pretty good. DeJong. Uh, Yadier, let's see what you get out of Yadier. You know, Yadier is obviously going to be your defensive guy. If you can get 10 home runs from Yadi in a 250 average, I think you're okay. Um, Pujols, we'll see what Pujols can bring about. But again, we went over that um, rotation. The bullpen, still solid with Gallegos back there, Cabrera, uh, Helsey, Hicks. Uh, whenever, if they get Alex Ray's back, I don't know his exact status. I know he's injured, a Wolford. So, still a solid club, but again, I'm going to give Milwaukee the first place position. Uh, Milwaukee, third ranked ERA, 14th ranked bullpen. Um, not a good hitting team, 27th average, 18th home runs, 12 runs though. I mean, 12 runs is impressive. You're not a good hitting team, so obviously with the runs being uh, 12th, you're, you're a clutch hitting team. But there's still, you don't go from that type of pitching to nothing, you know what I'm saying? And the way this division is set up, I don't think it's that competitive a division. If anything, this might be one of the weaker divisions in baseball. It's definitely the weak, weakest division in the National League. Um, sorry, Milwaukee fans, but, you know, it, it's not. Um, how did they address their hitting? Well, what was interesting is they went and got Andrew McCutcheon. Andrew's great. Andrew's going to be in leadership. He's going to bring a little pop. They, um, they brought over Pedro Severno from Baltimore. That could be a good chip, but they didn't really address it too much. Um, they, I mean, uh, Garcia left to Miami. Uh, Escobar went to New York. Uh, Manuel Pena. So I feel like they didn't really address their hitting, and they still got their pitching. Um, extended box, Boxberger. But are they going to be, who is going to be Milwaukee this year? And again, I, I had a hard time with this because I'm looking at them going, you know what? I could just see the Cardinals taking this division. And I almost inked in the Cardinals to win this division. But then when I look at the Cardinals, I'm like, you know, they got to have certain things happen. Uh, when you look at Wainwright and, and Yachty, you know, those guys are getting older. They can't be doing it forever. But when you look at the lineup for Milwaukee, uh, Colton Wong, he's a great chip. That was a good pickup when they got him, uh, what, a year or two ago, Lorenzo Kane. Again, Yelich. Yelich needs to hit 30-plus, 90 homers. Uh, 90 RBIs. He needs to hit at least 280. He needs to step up this year, uh, Andrew, because you don't know where you're going to get out of Andrew McCutcheon. You're going to get a low average. You're going to get some pop. Uh, but Renfro, the rest of that lineup, you're just kind of like, I don't know. But the rotation of Burns, Woodruff, Peralta, Hauser, I mean, this is a good rotation. It's a decent bullpen. Um, again, they were ranked 14th bullpen. Hader is, I mean, the guy's just lights out. Uh, but again, you got Boxberger, Williams, Ashby, and Cousins back there pulling up the bullpen. It's not a bad bullpen. It's going to be, again, a division race, but I think it's going to be a Milwaukee first, St. Louis second, Cubs third, Cincinnati fourth, Pittsburgh fifth. Now, moving on over to the American League East. I really think this division is becoming a super fun division to watch. Um, I do have Washington at fifth place. Um, sorry, Washington. You guys really didn't do anything. Um, your 24th ranked DRA and 28th bullpen. You really didn't do anything in the offseason to make you go from the into the top 20 or 20 top 15 uh, pitching. You did do some stuff. I mean, Steve Shizek, can't say that name. Sean Doolittle, um, that's pretty much it. You know, when you're looking at your free agency signings, uh, Nelson Cruz came over. Uh, you've got a good hitting club. Fourth ranked ERA, 21st home run, 16 runs. You know Juan Soto is going to be the guy. But you're just not a good pitching staff, man. And that's in this division with Atlanta and the Mets. And in Miami, Miami's got a good pitching staff. I just don't see you guys being there. Now let's move into fourth place spot. I've got Miami. Uh, funny funny thing, this is a great pitching organization. Um, they had a great rotation and, and fantastic bullpen last year. 11th ERA in 2021. Seventh ranked bullpen. Worst fielding team. Great minor league system. But their hitting sucked. 28th in average, 28th in home runs, 29th in runs. Uh, boo. I mean, really. 
Boo, Miami. Uh, what did they do address, to address in the offseason? Well, they got Garcia from Milwaukee and they gave him a four year, $53 million. And then, you know, Jorge Solar. So they're going, hey, we're going to have a little bit more pot. That's it. You're not, you know, you really didn't address making your pitching even better. Uh, still going to be a good pitching organization. But yeah, Miami, that's where I got you. Now, the first, second, and third slots on this were very, very hard. I'm initially i'm picking philadelphia at third and i'm sorry philly fans but i still think they're a playoff bound team i still think they're going to play off spot i think philadelphia did a ton in the offseason to address a lot of things uh, philadelphia was 18th in average 15th in hars and 13th in runs hey it's a hitter's ballpark 19th in the era 25th bullpen seventh most errors um of course getting kyle schwarber and nick castellanos is they're going to be fun as shit to watch they're going to hit the crap out of the ball but Corey Nibel, he needs to go back to his all-star form from 2017. What are they going to get out of him? Uh, president of Baseball Operations, we talked about this to him, blue in the face, said that he wanted pitching in outfield. Well, he got his outfield. Did he get his pitching? Eh, well, he lost Hector Norris. That's pitching. But he did pick up Corey Nibel. Again, we talked about that. Uh, you got Brad Hand. Hey, a little bit more uh, pitching. And then Hurries uh, Familia. They picked up him. But they got rid of Ian Kennedy. I don't think that's a big loss for them. Um, Archie Bradley left. And that's that's kind of it. You didn't really go nuts on pitching. I'm wondering if Dave Dombrowski is just going to pick up a chip throughout the season. Um, but I don't think Philadelphia really addressed that 25th ranked bullpen. When you look at what I just told you, what they picked up, they definitely addressed their outfield. Check, check mark. But Dave Dombrowski, I'd give you a... a a D minus when it came to pitching. You didn't really address that. And you need to address that in this division with Atlanta and the Mets and Miami. Um, this is becoming a very good pitcher's division. But I don't think he did enough. But Philadelphia is going to be fun as hell to watch. Absolutely, they're going to be fun as hell to watch on offense. Um, they could be very heartbreaking on on uh, pitching. Again, that bullpen, it could be a situation where you're just like, you're going to see some games lost late, and that's going to be crushing for you. Um, you. This is what Dave was worried about. He wanted to get pitching. He wanted to get some bullpen to close it out. But did you? I don't think he did enough. Your lineup's going to be great. I mean, Schwarber, JT, Harper, Nick, uh, Hoskins, Segura, uh, Diddy. I mean, this is a good hitting lineup, but uh, you got Aaron Nola, you got Kyle Gibson, you got Zach Eflin. <laughs> Eflin. Just teasing. Uh, Ranger, uh, we'll see what happens with Zach Wheeler. But your bullpen, is this, this isn't the bullpen. Nibel helps. Don't get me wrong. That really helps the bullpen. But Yuri's, Jose Alvarado, you know, those guys are going to be con, uh, Coonrod, uh, Brad Hand. These guys need to come up strong. I mean, you've got a, a bullpen ranked 25th. That's not going to do it, guys. That's if I just, I think... The Phillies need to add some pieces. They really do. But I like what I see. I like what I see. I think Philly is still a playoff-bound team. Number two. I know everyone's jumping on this train. Everyone wants this team because of all the moves they did. Um, this is a tough call. But I picked the Mets as second and put Atlanta at first. And I know everyone's going, oh, you're crazy. Hey, listen, this is a team that had great pitching. Ninth ERA, ninth bullpen. But... The big question mark, just like it was down the stretch last year, was Jacob Degrom. He's already out now another four weeks. He can't even throw. Uh, you're not a good hitting team. Getting Buck Showalter helps, uh, but Degrom, um, I don't know. That's your again. That's your key. It's great having Mad Max on there, but you need Lindor. You need Mc, McCain and McNeil. Those guys have to have way better seasons. Marte is going to help with the Gold Gloves. Uh, Chris Bassett, but the thing with the Mets is you need to be 500 or more on the road and as of today their opening day starter is not announced but you need to be better than 500 on the road and it's and it's the same thing with Philadelphia both those teams if you're going to be playoff bound you got to be better on the road being crappy and trying to make the playoffs being crappy in respect to being under 500 doesn't bold well reach in the playoffs but they did a lot they got rid of Javier uh, but they picked up Max they picked up Starling I think Starling is this offense is totally different. This is going to be a fun offense. I think they definitely address their hitting. They're going to be a better hitting team. 
Uh, Marte, dude, that guy brings amazing defense, speed, and pop. That's a. I don't think people are really paying attention to that four-year, seventy-eight million dollar contract. Uh, Marcus Stroman, I don't think it's going to hurt them. Uh, Mark Kanha, left field. They got rid of Noah Syndergaard. That's probably a good thing for them to clear money. Uh, Eduardo Escobar. Hey, hey, hey. But then they got rid of Aaron Loop. Uh, Brad Hand. And Familia, like I said, they did do a lot of stuff in the offseason. They did a ton. Um, their pitching was already good. But you're talking about battling with the Atlanta Braves. That's who you're going up against. And that's a monster team. I still think the Braves are solid. Uh, Olsen being added to the to them isn't going to hurt them. But again, the Mets theme is, is this a team that's going to come together? Is this a team that can be competitive? Uh, when you talk about that lineup, there's someone I want to talk about in that lineup is, I think... I don't think people are paying attention. I, th I feel like Pete Alonso is going to have a big year. He, I feel like he's a power hitter, but he's also figuring out hitting. If you notice his, I don't know, there's something about his swing the last year or so. I feel like he's becoming a better uh, student of hitting. I just, I don't know, there's something about him. But uh, Nemo, when you're going to get him back, Starling, he's going to be in there. Lindor, you got to hit better than what you did last year. Uh, Robinson Cano's back. See what happened. Escobar, McNeil. I mean, these guys got a hit. But that lineup, I mean, now you've got uh, with Max and DeGrom. That's the big deal. Now, the problem is, is you've got Jacob and Max sidelined. Um, even though Max is on course to throw in the bullpen, uh, this is coming up Tuesday, he's was scratched Saturday because of a hand, hamstring discomfort. So, again, the Mets, there's just, man, you got Max and DeGrom's out for four weeks. Max got a hamstring, so now you're looking at Bassett and Carrasco and Walker pulling the starting. Now, you've got a great bullpen. That's not going to be, you know, the bullpen is going to, I mean, with Diaz, uh, Trevor May, Adovino, Pena, Lugo, this is a good bullpen. Uh, Rodriguez back there, Jolie. But you can wear your pitch starting pitching thin, which they already have question marks early. But the main thing with them is they need Max and they need Jacob in the second half. If they can keep those guys on, uh, on watch, keep them healthy, don't wear them out in the beginning, don't let them go full, full metal jacket the first half. You need those guys. The key to this division is, and if the Mets do win the division, it comes down to that. They need their their vets to hit better. And they also need um, their starting rotation, Max and Jacob. They need those two in the second half healthy. If those two guys are healthy in the second half, they take it easy in the first half. This team could win the division. But I still have Atlanta is winning the National League East. Atlanta's loaded, guys. And it's not about what they added or what they didn't add. With Atlanta, it's about what they already have. They've got a loaded team. This is a ridiculous team, man. And they did a lot in the offseason. This is the World Series champs. 8th in ERA, 12th in bullpen, 12th in average, 3rd in HR, 8th in runs. Uh, Matt Olson went from uh, one of the worst ballparks to hit in to a hitting ballpark. Uh, Oakland was 3rd worst as a park factor and 5th worst for HRs. Atlanta's 16th and... And six of the park factors. So you combine that with the people hitting around him. Uh, with Marcel, Azuna, and Acuna. It's ridiculous. Um, Marcel will be missing the first 20 games of, of, due to suspension. But that's not going to affect them. Acuna is May-ish, they're saying. Uh, Max Fried will be the opening day starter. They did a lot in the offseason. Um, Freddie Freeman gone. That drama there is not good. Uh, Jorge Solar. That cleared up a lot. You know, that... Uh, extending Eddie Rosario is great. Kenley Jensen, I don't think people are really paying attention to that. You, you've got a 12th ranked bullpen, and you add Kenley Jensen to the bullpen. And Colin McHugh from Tampa, uh, Kirby Yates. I mean, dude, they added pieces. Um, but they also got rid of pieces. Uh, Drew Smiley left, uh, Chris Martin. So they did get rid of some pieces, but again, it's not a lot. Uh, Jock Peterson with San Francisco. 
so they cleared up some money but i think you're looking at a solid club uh atlanta is and i think people really did give atlanta the respect that they deserved over the last couple years being in the nlcs um nlcs two times in a row um and then going to the world series and winning it but they went to that world series and won it because that that bullpen was freaking amazing um but again let's look at their projected lineup now when i talk about their lineup what i'm talking about is it wasn't about adding pieces they knew they were getting marcel back but when you got these young guys like austin riley um dansby swanson these guys are getting older and better and they're already super disgusting already as it is i mean austin riley is incredible uh, you got eddie rosario ozzy albies matt olson's gonna have a great season i see matt hitting pretty similar and better numbers in atlanta um marcel once he comes back alex dixon duvall i mean this is a good hitting team in the lineup um question mark with morton if he's going to continue to this run he's had over the last couple of years max Fried is solid kyle wright uh, whenever they get back in anderson so you're looking at a very tough organization and not just tough but their bullpen they're still this is still going to be a good bullpen getting jensen you got will smith you still got matt sick back there you got mentor these are the guys that got you through the playoffs these guys are solid relief pitchers they're still going to be a disgusting bullpen so i'm picking atlanta first met second philly third miami fourth that's my dog doug so i'm picking atlanta first uh new york met second philadelphia third miami fourth and washington fifth now granted this this is just the divisions we're breaking down um, you got to remember the playoffs have been expanded. So a lot of these teams, um, this what's made it so hard to pick this year. Um, there's a lot of teams that I call on the bubble. Uh, those are the teams like the Cubs. I mean, I'm serious. The Cubs, the Padres to some extent. Um, Philadelphia. Um, maybe Texas. Uh, Angels. Seattle. Detroit, Minnesota. Tampa Bay, Boston. I feel like those are these teams. You know, it's funny because if you got some team that's like San Francisco last year that's running away with it, you're like, eh, who cares? You know, I just need to make wild card even more so this year. So what I'm saying is, is this year is going to be more interesting than prior years because at the All Star break and the trade deadline, what are these teams going to do to address where they're at for the second push, for the second half push, so they can make that playoff berth? Because a lot of the team's mentality is, is we're just battling in our the National League. Where do we stand in the National League? Forget divisions. Let's just battle the teams in the National League. That's how I would approach it. But it's going to be a fantastic season. So those are my predictions, guys. Um, hopefully they work out. Um, I'm going to end this now. I know this is a long podcast, but that is our predictions for the season 2022. Thank you for listening to Ball and Play. This is Sesma signing out. Have yourself a great day. See ya.